charging to the front to that. Oh my God. Might have been a robbery gone wrong. Right now we're going to reach you your rights. Me? Both of you being arrested. Do you have a right to remain silent? This is not a death notification. It's a trap. And Valerie McDaniel and Leon Jacob just walked right into it. Why are we being arrested? Caught in an undercover sting operation, the couple now faces charges for solicitation of capital murder, and not just for one victim, but two. Valerie's ex-husband, Mac, and Leon's ex-girlfriend, Megan Vericus. We began to put the puzzle together as to how they got to the point where they're willing to have someone killed. In 2014, Leon Jacob is living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Recently divorced, he's staying at a local hotel where he meets assistant manager, Megan Vericus. Megan is smart. She's a hard worker. She's sort of an everyday woman going about her life, doing well in her career. She's a very likable person. She's someone that you'd want to be friends with. Leon struck up a conversation. He seemed charming and fun to her, and she liked him, and they began dating, and she quickly fell for him. They had a good life together. They were in Pittsburgh, uh, a normal, really good relationship. After dating for two years, in late 2016, Leon tells Megan he's accepted a job at a hospital in Houston, Texas. He asks Megan to move there with him. Let's not forget, she had a career in Pittsburgh. Her family was there, her network was there, her roots were there. But she had very strong feelings for Leon, and he had an opportunity to do residency, as she understood, in Houston. And so packing up her whole life for him to move here, I mean, women do that every day. She moved believing that he was this great guy, family man, doctor, and then it wasn't long before they were in Texas that she started to realize things are not as they seem. In her own words, one month later, things drastically turned. Once he got her isolated in Houston is when it was time for him to show his true colors. Megan quickly realized that she was the only one that was really contributing to the household. She was doing all the work. She was taking care of the dog. She was doing all the grocery shopping, and that really began to wear on her. And she begins to argue with Leon about the fact that she's the only one doing anything in their relationship. When she confronted Leon, he snapped. She felt threatened. She felt that he was trying to restrain her. He hit her across the face, and she immediately knew that this was not going to be how she was going to spend one more day of her life. And she walked out that door. Megan immediately files assault charges against Leon. But if she thought she was rid of Leon Jacob, she was mistaken. He did not stay away from her. He made no attempt. He continued to call her, text her, show up at her work, track her down through her friends. This wasn't the first time Leon refused to let a relationship end on someone else's terms. Leon was actually previously divorced and his ex-wife had said that he was extremely cruel. And as it turns out, just a year after that divorce was final, that he was charged with stalking, and she was the victim on that case as well. Megan also files stalking charges and applies for a protective order. It forbids Leon from making contact or coming anywhere near her. A protective order is just a piece of paper. If you decide to abide by it, it's good. It really didn't mean anything to him because he continued to contact Megan, threaten Megan, follow her, show up at her work. Really, the protective order did nothing to dissuade him from stalking her. Leon is arrested and booked into the Harris County Jail. There's enough evidence to make the charges stick. Leon receives a subpoena to appear in court a few weeks later and is released on a $20,000 bond. The conditions of his release were to have no contact with Megan. It's written there in black and white across that bond release form. He didn't adhere to that, and he was persistently trying to reach her, showing up at her place of business. Megan is a strong woman, but for any woman in that position, 
It really shakes you to your core. Shockingly, while Leon continues to harass Megan, he strikes up a new romance and moves in with an old flame, Valerie McDaniel. He moves into her apartment almost immediately. Leon had no place to live. Megan had kicked him out. He didn't have a way to pay for an apartment. His family did not welcome them into their homes. And so that's when he began a relationship with Valerie McDaniel. Despite Leon and Valerie's blossoming relationship, Leon remains fixated on Megan Vericus and his upcoming court date for the stalking charges. The longer these charges lingered, the more concerned that Leon was about his reputation. When we looked closer at him, we realized that Leon had not finished the schooling and the residency that he needed in order to become licensed in Texas. And he was well aware that the state of Texas was never going to allow him to be a doctor if he was convicted of assault family member or stalking. He had something to lose, and Leon knew it. The one thing standing between Leon and his success? Megan Vericus. So to him, it was really important to get rid of Megan so that those charges could go away. Two weeks after getting out of jail, Leon storms into the office of his bondsman, Michael Kubosh, inexplicably telling him about a man he'd hired to kill Megan. When he came in, he turned and shut the door and locked it behind him. And he said, listen, she can't be testifying against me. It'll affect my license uh, to be a doctor. And I've paid this man a lot of money to take care of this matter. That's when I felt like I was talking to the devil himself. It fit the profile of something very sinister. And I couldn't let it go without reporting it to the major crimes division of the district attorney's office. The Houston Police Department joins forces with the Harris County District Attorney's Office to search for the man. Megan had every reason to fear for her life. Within days, investigators get their first break in the case when they connect with the man Leon hired. His name is Taz. Taz informed us that Leon had hit him up to make his ex-girlfriend go away. Taz had been paid $9,900. But Taz got cold feet and decided he didn't want any part of it. But rather than return the money, he just disappeared. Instead of helping Leon, Taz decides to help the police. They assign an undercover agent to play the role of Adam, a fake hitman, who Taz brings in to do the actual murder. I've done murder for hire investigations before, where I played hitman. I knew that because of the involved parties, this was going to be a very interesting case. And we had to make sure that we did everything right. We almost have everything that we need in order to charge both Leon and Valerie with a solicitation to commit capital murder. But we decide to go further and stage the death of Mac McDaniel and the kidnapping of Megan. Mac McDaniel said he would be willing to do whatever we needed to stage his death. Leon knew what dead bodies looked like because he had medical training. We had to make it look real. So it was decided that photos would be taken of Mac, like it was a carjacking and he had been shot in his vehicle. We got pig's blood, and the picture would show that he had been shot in the head, and there was what appeared to be real blood covering his head and, and his body. We staged Megan in the warehouse, and then we zip tied her hands and feet. And we were very careful binding the duct tape around her mouth. But it had gotten to her. And she just started weeping. And you could see the emotional toll that it was taking. Hauntingly realistic, the photos will help Adam prove that Megan has really been kidnapped. It will also give Leon the chance to spare her life by calling off the hit. Well, right now, you know, we got we got her. You know, she's gagged and tied up and everything, but she's no, she's not cooperating. Sergeant Duran sends Leon the photos from Megan's staged kidnapping as proof. His response is chilling. Matter, you're gonna have to do it, do it and matter your way. 
just after midnight, it's all over. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. She's uh, she's dead. She's gone. You already took care of Yeah. I don't want to know anything. Right now, we're going to reach you your rights. Me? Both of you are being arrested. You would like to remain silent? The couple is cuffed, and the gravity of what Valerie has done begins to hit home. Valerie McDaniels jumped out of a seven-story apartment building that she lived in, and she fell to her death. My heart just sunk, and I felt such sadness because I knew she had a child. I believe Leon was her downfall. There's no one left for Leon to hide behind. All eyes will be on him as he faces trial alone for both murder plots. Our main strategy going forward was to try and prove that he never had any intent to harm either person. He was never on recording saying, I want Megan dead, and he was never on recording saying, I want Mac dead. In my opening statement to the jury, I was relying heavily on our themes going forward of the lack of intent of Leon to harm either person. It's going to be revealed throughout the course of this trial that Leon repeatedly stated, I want nothing to happen to Megan. I want no harm. I just need her to get out of town. And I tried to get that in the jury's minds. So Leon knew what he was saying. If he wanted her dead, he would have said, I want her dead. And he didn't. And then once the Houston Police Department got involved through Officer Duran and the undercover investigation, you will finally realize the agenda, the motive, the narration that Officer Duran was trying to make clear. It was the undercover officer and Taz basically trying to keep raising Leon and Valerie to commit to a level of escalation. Neither one of them were ready to do at the times. And you always have Leon coming back and saying, no, I don't want that to happen. My question was, isn't it true that just seven days after you and Megan broke up that you were sleeping with Valerie McDaniels? Leon's total and complete indifference to Megan's life becomes disturbingly clear. It was your belief that Megan Varacos was somewhere with duct tape wrapped around her mouth, right? Yes. And at this point, you'd agree with me that no time did you tell Officer Duran, time out, stop, this has gone too far, I don't want any part of this. You never said that, did you? Not those exact words, I did not. It was shocking to me. I mean, I've heard a lot as a prosecutor, but when you hear that, it's very chilling that someone can be that cold.